I just know he started to yell and got in my face. And then at first he took off his belt and then just started hammering. Just started wailing. Yeah. On you. And where where was he hitting you? Just wherever he could aim at. So you're just getting hit all over your body. Yeah, pretty much. Wow. And then I think that was kind of the start of the abuse for you, right? Yeah. And uh, so from that point on, what was your what was your thoughts like? Hmm. Is he? Were you, What were your thoughts about him at that point? Well, my thoughts at that point was more like. Is this the way how grown people are supposed to be? Hi, this is the Rising Above podcast. The voice you just heard was that of my brother, Michael. He came on today to share what life was like before foster care. I hope you find our life story inspiring and hopeful, especially if you've gone through some of the same things that we had. Just know that you're not alone. I'm your host, David Hess, and I hope you enjoy the show. Good, David. How you been? I've been pretty good. Just uh, trying to kick off this podcast. Oh yeah, <laughs> hoping the best, man. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> um, so I brought you on because I wanted to talk about our past and right. us, you know, like some of the things that we had gone through um, when we lived in Florida, and then what ultimately led into us going into foster care, and then maybe what foster care was like for you know you and um. I'll eventually get into what foster care was like for me, but I'll probably do that in a separate episode. <clears throat> so with that being said, um, Michael and I grew up in Lake Worth, Florida, and uh, um, we, Michael's a, a year older than me, um, but uh, my dad had met our mom, I believe, when she was 16. Yeah, 16. And she got pregnant with you. Right. And uh, then, uh, so that I think that led into, you know, she was still in high school when she had when she had you. And then a year later, she had me. Right. And then our mom lived with our dad for a while. Uh, for a little while. Yeah. And uh, our dad was also older. Um, and also was is from Honduras, so he's uh, an immigrant. Um. And so things weren't so great for them. Um, From our understanding, he was pretty abusive to her. And uh, I think at times put her in the hospital. Um, I think he he almost killed her at one point. And then that led into her um, ultimately just leaving him. And I think I was like three years old when that happened. Yeah. Um, And you were probably about four. four. So, I just remember uh, the one of the last. Well, I remember one memory we had. We had a, like a a rooster. Oh, I, <laughs> oh my gosh, dude! I, I remember we had a pet rooster, <laughs> and I would chase that thing around the yard. And I, th- I thought that thing was so mean. <clears throat> right. And then uh, come to find out later on, the thing disappeared, and I I didn't know what happened to it, but apparently they slaughtered it and we ate Ate it for dinner (laughs) (laughs) so messed up in so many ways (laughs) um so i do have a lot of good memories from that i mean not a lot but a few good memories from from that point in time and then uh i also remember a situation where um our dad got or our mom and dad got into a fight and um it, I had I think I had to break a window to get in the house because it was locked. I don't know if you remember that. Uh uh-uh, oh no. Yeah, I really don't remember that at all. No, I and then I remember shortly after that we ended up just pretty much packing up and leaving. But when we left, we didn't have a car. We didn't have anything. We just literally just started walking. Right. And it seemed like we didn't really have anywhere to go at that point. Yeah. And so then we just started uh walking and we walked down some alleyway and then ran into some guy we didn't know and our mom just seemed to like kick it off with him and started talking and um the next thing you know we're living with this this man and i remember at that point like i was thinking like and i was only three and i remember thinking what are we doing 
it, it just seemed so bizarre to me right um to be living with some stranger that we didn't even know um so what was that time like for you michael i mean i mean i remember how i felt and i felt you know like worried because i didn't really know what to expect it just life seemed strange and i was only again like three or four right at that time you were a little bit older than me yeah. do you remember what your feelings at the time were um yeah man i like i was a little nervous just because i didn't know what to expect just moving in with a complete stranger that we just met walking through an alley from living from our dad's house and um just wondering where it's gonna be like just living with somebody that we barely even know or had a chance to get to know before we even moved in yeah it was uh it was, like i said it was seemed real bizarre to me um and then so we we lived with him for a while um i believe we lived with him for a couple of years and then we slow i think we moved to michigan at one point and we moved to howell and we we didn't really have anywhere to go so we started staying in a uh, homeless shelter am i right yeah you're right we said it started staying in a homeless shelter for a little while and then after that i don't remember where we t went in took off to um and then i believe after that we went we went and stayed in uh, uh an apartment in ypsilanti for a, a little while and then our stepdad uh had you know paid for us to come back to florida and then we moved back in with him right again and uh I think at that point, things seemed to get kind of, kind of bad. Like, yeah, it started to go downhill than what it was before, from what I remember in a way. What What exactly do you remember? Like beforehand or? Uh, uh sure. Beforehand, afterhand. <laughs> all right. Um, I just remember beforehand how like just going to bed at night and. Like, just looking at the bedroom um, door and just seeing our mom getting abused by our stepdad. And what did what did you see? Um, just saw um, them standing in front of the dining room table arguing. And, they like, they were trying to keep their voices down a little bit so they won't wake us kids up. And I just remember him just uh, slapping the crap out of our mom. And just watching that i was just terrified just because i thought at that moment we was going to be next of him coming in and waking us up for no reason to get beat and at that time were we were we getting beat um no um we was already in bed well i think you and our little brother was already asleep and i couldn't sleep that night and just having to look look out the bedroom door as i was just laying there in bed wow yeah and how old were you um i was probably like around five at the time okay. or somewhere around there so at five years old you remember looking out at the door and thinking are we going to be next right wow um and that was kind of that was kind of the start of the abuse right yeah pretty much like he started abusing our mother first right yeah and then from that from that is kind of gradually led into him being abusive towards us kids right do you remember the first time that uh you were being abused um i think the first time when the very first i the very first time that i remember of getting abused is when I think it was a couple of days when our mom got in our stepdad got married and it was a couple of days after that and I decided to run away to our dad's house. Why why did you decide to run away? Um, just from seeing our mom being abused um from time to time in the house. So you were scared? Yeah pretty much and i was just scared out of my um mind 
So at the so when I was outside playing with toys with you and some one one of our friends, I I told you guys I was gonna be right back and after I said that I just took off I just took off and went straight to our dad's house. And about three hours later, our mom came walking in, grabbing me by the arm and telling him, like, I can't remember what she told him, but and then it just took me home. And then after that, that's when he started to put his hands on me as harming me. Wow. Yeah. Do you remember what he did to you? Um, not as much. I don't remember about um i just know he started to yell and got in my face and then at first he took off his belt and then just started hammering just started wailing yeah on you. and where where was he hitting you just wherever he could aim at so you're just getting hit all over your body yeah pretty much wow and then I think that was kind of the start of the abuse for you, right? Yeah. And uh, so from that point on, what was your what was your thoughts like? Hmm. Is he? Were you, what were your thoughts about him at that point? Well, my thoughts at that point was more like, is this the way how grown people are supposed to be? Um hitting their kids like what happened to the old fashioned days of butt whooping on the butt or um stuff like that well that is i i honestly i like i said i don't i think i've told you before i don't really have like much memories i think of different you know situations that happened especially like the first times we were we were beat um, I just remember those times being hard. And uh I think uh I think there's a, I mean there's a lot to to kind of uncover during those days. Yeah, pretty much. Um so it's kind of hard to like figure out like what we should be talking about, but you know, um I hope that uh again, I hope this podcast is a help to people as we're trying to un- you know we're trying to unfoil our, our own story for, for people, people, for other people. So, um, all right. So you, then at that point you started getting beat and then you started kind of stepping up and taking the blame for different things go, going on. Like you, would, if I got in trouble, you would say, you know, I did it yeah. just, just so I wouldn't get beat or just so, uh, Joey wouldn't get beat or what, what was, what was your original thought on that, and why did you start stepping up? Um, the reason why I started stepping up is just because, like, I couldn't see my little siblings just to be getting hurt for whatever reason at that moment was. Like, it, like, I couldn't see that ever happening to my little siblings just because knowing that the fact that I just kind of feel like it was my place just to protect you guys from harm's way no matter what the cause was so you felt that it was your duty to be our protector yes and i think you did pretty good at that because i mean that's one of my greatest memories of you always you know you're always taking the blame for me and trying to protect me and uh i think that's one thing i've always admired about you um so let's kind of talk about the situation i mean we we're we kind of we kind of painted a picture of abusive of an abusive home um it's mainly physical abuse uh some mental and it, like i said it's mainly physical our stepdad was a drunk um and what I mean by drunk, he would drink like a couple twenty four packs in a weekend. Yeah, and he would drink like a twelve pack just an, on a weeknight after work. And uh, <clears throat> I, I believe he had some real issues. I don't really under I don't really know anything about his past. Uh, you know what kind of background he had, but right. you know he was a he was a real hard person. 
and not that it, it excuses any of that right but um, at all so let's kind of talk about what led us into coming to michigan and the situation that had happened that caused us to ultimately leave you want to kind of um yeah um so i just remember we was me and you was fighting um over a bed that night and um he came walking in and i just remember our mom telling telling him to go into our room to handle us and and just remember him um just I think he asked what was going on then I think you I and then you told him what was going on that you wanted the bed and and I just remember him ripping off my t shirt and just like just well uh, welling on my back because it, you had beat me in the back, yeah, so he thought he was gonna do that to you to punish you, yeah, pretty much, yeah, and then from like from shoulders down out my whole backside was just all bruised up yeah i remember it being black and blue yeah and i believe you were also grounded on top of that um yeah pretty like, much like i think you had to stay in the room right yeah like in, in our bedroom and then i remember having to go to school and explain to the teachers because your teacher had stopped me a couple times and asked where you were and I told her that you were sick and she's like for two weeks he's been sick for two weeks and i'm like yeah and I, I don't think she believed me i think she knew something was up but right you know um so then it was at that point and it was, again it was like two weeks um it was at that point that a, a family friend had found out about it found out about the situation and had told our mom that she needs to go do something about about this she needs to right. report it and if she doesn't report it then the she... family friend was going to go and report it to social services right which in, which would mean that you know we would more than likely be taken out of the home <clears throat> so i just remember uh we had to go down to the west west palm beach county sheriff's department and we all had to give statements about what had happened and i remember them taking you away from us and they I believe they were taking pictures of your back. Yeah. And that you were taking statements from you. And um then I remember also during that time they they had went and picked uh, our stepdad up um from work and had arrested him. Right, yeah. Um yeah, I remember though the two cops um took me to an emergency room just to get x rays on my backside. Wow. Was there any permanent damage? Um, not that I remember. I think it was just all bruised from that situation of what he had done. Wow. Um, that is, that is crazy. I, I, see, I didn't know that they took you to the emergency room. Yeah. I, yeah, I remember that. Just because I just remember driving back to the police station and stopping to get a Burger King meal. The police officers? Yeah. Stopped and bought you a Burger King? Yeah. That was pretty dope. <laughs> yeah, it was. <laughs> pretty cool. Um, So, I think it's pretty safe to say that our, uh, our mom kind of had a tendency to find these abusive people. And I don't think it's any fault of hers, really. I think it's, I, I think she didn't really have much guidance in life. And, um, you know, from getting pregnant at a very young age and being in school and just trying to figure out what, what she should do with her life. And right, uh, she never really had the opportunity because she had two kids at a very young age and then had two more, you know, later on in her 20s. Um but you know she regardless she still had she still had a duty to report it and make sure that her son was safe and make sure that no other man would put her hand put his hey. hands on on her kids right and uh so anyways so then 
we go to the police department, we write statements, our stepdad's arrested, and then at that point they tell us that we have to leave. We can't we can't stay in the house anymore. We have to move. And we really didn't have anywhere to go cuz we didn't really I mean we had like other family that lived in West Palm Beach area like our uncles but um like their places weren't big enough for us right for, for four kids and and our mom so um we we moved to Michigan they we had family in Michigan my my mom had two sisters that lived up here and she's from Ohio so i think she was maybe thinking that you know she'd be closer to some family in Ohio and uh so then uh, we pretty much just up and leave. We we go home that night. We Sorry. start packing, and we pack the next morning, and we're gone, essentially. Oh, yeah. And I just remember that moment, like, when we're packing stuff, like, thinking, we have to leave all of this stuff behind, all of our stuff, all of our toys, all of, all of our clothes. I, I mean, we had some clothes but we didn't have all our clothes we left yeah. a lot of clothes our you know beds and just bikes bikes and stuff. everything that we had ever gotten in our life we had right. to leave behind and i just remember thinking what is life going to bring what is life going to bring us right you know what is it, going to be the next chapter or I, I look at it as chapters i look at our life as chapters this there's like different there's been different defining situations in our life that have been like separated by what seems to be chapters to me so that chapter of florida was closing <clears throat> but uh um yeah so then we left we came to michigan we didn't have anything our mom had four hundred dollars to her name she had four hundred dollars and two and four kids and she had to pay for gas food, food. and everything and no job no job lined up and she was just going i guess on hopes of being able to get help from her sisters when she got here right <clears throat> and uh so when we got here um we weren't we didn't really get any we didn't really get much help i don't believe uh uh-uh, uh not uh, really that you know that people were able to like our our family i don't think was able to really help her too much mainly because they had their own families yeah and that's no fault of their own um so we ended up living in a homeless shelter up in fowler michigan and uh we lived there from early early summer late spring till about august and in august we were we were kicked out and then we were uh, you know told that um we weren't meeting the requirements to to stay there anymore and that we needed to figure something else out so we we left and at that point that pretty much left us homeless oh yeah pretty much we didn't have anywhere to stay we and it's kind of amazing that uh like a homeless shelter would kick kids out on in the street yeah that is pretty funny well (laughs) it's not funny but (laughs) um it just it's kind of kind of ironic in a sense but um so yeah we didn't have anywhere to go and we're just living out of our van and i remember that we didn't really have any food or anything um we you and i I remember you and i were eating just plain Plain the plain uh ramen noodles chunks of ramen noodles where you break it apart and then you know just Just eating it hard oh yeah it was you know just because we were so hungry and uh so i think we stayed like a night or two in the van Am I right? Yeah. What was that like for you? Um. What were your thoughts? Like, I remember being, because I was like, I think I was like eight or nine at that time. And you were like nine or ten. Yeah. Probably nine. And I remember my thoughts were like, oh, this, I mean, it's kind of cool to sleep in a van. But at the same time, I didn't really understand the severity of our situation. Right. Um, my thoughts was on it. It was pretty cool, but at the same time, it sucked just because you didn't have enough room just to, like, get up and just run around inside a house or apartment or or any kind of 
place just to have a roof over your head, to have the ability to just be free and just do whatever. Did you have any thoughts of, like, what was going to happen? Like, were you thinking, man, we seem like we're in a low spot right now. We're sleeping inside a van. We don't have anywhere to go. Oh, yeah. Did you um, have any of those thoughts? Yeah, I, I thought about it, like, once or twice uh, about it. But, like, me being as a kid at the time, um, I, I like, I us- really wasn't trying to think about, um, like, at that moment, I wasn't tr- um, thinking about what's going to happen next. Um, but, I, like, there will be a little bit of times where I just wonder, like, um, like where where are we gonna go next though? So it's almost kind of like you're just never you ne- we never knew what the next step would be. Yeah, we pretty much kind of along for the ride. <clears throat> um, so then I remember we stayed in the van for a couple nights and then or a night or two, and then we ended up coming down to Lansing. And when we came to Lansing, we went to the Red Cross, I believe, and they they put us up in a in a hotel for a couple nights or a week or something. And then I remember we had to go back a couple different times to renew that. So I think we stayed in a hotel for about a month, right? Yeah, I want to say yeah, it was about <clears throat> a month. And during that time, um, like I said, our mom didn't have much. She didn't have a job. Uh, she had two young kids. She had a, like a two year old, and I believe Joey was four or something like that. Yeah, I'm eight. You're nine. Nine. <clears throat> so she, you know, had her hands full. So, um, she didn't have a job. She's just trying to figure figure this out, and um, it was at that point that um, social services serv- social services got involved. Right. And actually, I think social services was actually uh, contacted when we left the the, oh, the home, shelter. the homeless shelter. But then they couldn't find us for, you know, a, a, a while. We went right. undetected because we were just essentially living on the streets. And so um, I just I remember one of my biggest things from that time, my biggest memories was staying in the hotel and us not having food for like like breakfast lunch or dinner i think we might have had like granola bars for breakfast or something yeah um but i just remember remember going to the homeless shelter every single night after school and getting getting food yeah i remember that as well i remember having to stand in line with all these old rough looking people all these actually like they're actually homeless looking people and we were actually homeless but I feel like nah. we didn't. I feel like we didn't look that way. Right. We probably we, did, but, but like a little more cleaner than what they probably look like a little bit. So it seemed like, but I'm sure we looked just as bad. Right. But uh, I just remember thinking at that point that this is a low spot because, you know, like we never had to go without food, never. Right. And then having to jump into a situation like that to not having food at all. It, yeah, it was difficult. So, um, so then I think a couple, like I said, we stayed there for about a month and then we had to do that for about a month. And then, uh, we started school in that September and, um, it was, I think we were there for, in school for like a couple of weeks. Yeah. And then that's when a, uh, social worker came to the school and pulled us out of class early uh, towards the end of the day and had told us that our mom, you know, will no longer have custody of us and that um, she isn't able to take care of us and that we were going to be going into care. And I just remember at that point, I was, I was so upset because our, my relationship with our mom was I felt I felt that she was like my best friend you know like I I was very close I was very close with her and I feel that I felt that you know I was losing like my best friend I couldn't 
I've never had that feeling since. But it was like such a heartbreaking moment to find out that I would never be able to be with my mom again. <clears throat> what was that moment for like for you? Um, it was mostly heartbreaking for me just um just for being separated from my younger brothers and sisters, wondering if I ever gonna be seeing them again, or like where are we gonna be? um going to or and i think that was my biggest worries and concerns at that moment it is just losing my younger re my relatives that was uh one of my biggest <clears throat> concerns too because i always kind of felt like i had a, a some, one i think at some point i had to take on like a kind of like a parental figure like like i i started like kind of being a parent to our siblings to like not not necessarily to you but to our younger sis sister and our younger brother right i felt like it was like my duty to help take care of them and so i think at that point i was also realizing that i wouldn't be able to do that and i didn't know what was going to happen to them so i was i was scared i was worried oh yeah and uh so i remember just breaking down and crying and uh i think i tried arguing with the <laughs> with the social worker like oh she's able to take care of us and you know um so then we we went to this we went to the uh catholic social services that's where we were put into care at was right like, um was there and then um we uh i'm placed into a different home uh joey and i are placed into one home and Tiana's placed into a separate home, and you're placed into a, a separate home. Right. At that moment, when you were meeting your new foster parents, and you knew we were all going our separate ways, what was that like for you? Um, pretty scared. Um, scared just because here I was moving in to a stranger's house without knowing anything barely about them at all and me being in just being separated from you guys because like there was really no other kid in the house around my age um but um when i first got to my foster care home um i, I was mostly quiet and crying all the time um like I I went to a really deep depression for months, for a couple of month, a few months, and just knowing that all this situation, me getting ripped from our mom and from my little brothers and sisters, I knowing that I might not see them again. But we uh, but we did. We right. ended up going to uh have we had visits uh weekly i believe it was once a week yeah and i believe it was like every monday or something yeah it like was an hour. yeah it was every monday yeah what were those moments like for you um when you can only see your brother and your sister uh, your brothers and your sister for an hour a day or our hour a week essentially um i was really excited like i just remember just going to school and just couldn't wait to just get out to go home and then just go straight to the agency to visit my little brothers and sisters. Like I was just, I was filled with excitement just knowing that I could actually see them for at least an hour or two or even for 30 minutes if it was the case. But I, I remember that, uh, it was the days of visit was like my favorite, favorite day of the week. Um, because I knew I'd be able to get to see our mom, and I knew I'd be able to see my brothers and sisters, and uh, you and I always had a pretty good relationship. We were, we've always been really close. Oh yeah. And we we've always fight a lot, but <laughs> we would always make up and be like best friends. Right. <clears throat> but um, so being able to to uh, see each other on on you know every week was always my highlight, and uh, I just remember leaving when i would leave i would just felt so sad thinking you know like man that was it 
You right. Know, like, like, I don't know. It, it's just, it's different. It's different being a foster kid. It's different when you don't have the normal family dynamics that a normal person has or a normal family has. And what's normal? I mean, nobody really has, nobody's really normal, but when you right. don't have, when you're not in the home with your, with your mom and your dad and your brothers and your sister, then, and you're with people who you never knew until recently, then it's a complete different, it's a completely story. different scenario and, right. and dynamic. So, um, so you go into this foster home and what was, what was your relationship like with your foster parents? Um, what was it like at first? Like at first it, it was really hard for me to trust them. Um, but I just remember like, cause like I said, I was really depressed crying all the time. And why, why did you have a hard time trusting them? Um, just because of the situation of like getting beat and having bruises all over my back and have to move here. So were you afraid that maybe they'll do the same thing to you? Um, yeah. And, um, I just remember just going to the bedroom and crying and my mom will come in and uh, my foster mom will come in and try and like calm me down. And it was like, Hey, it's all right. Um, like we're not the same, we're not going to do the same thing that you just came out of the situation from like, um, they was just trying to let me know that like, you're able to trust us. Like you're in good hands that we're not going to let anybody harm you or hurt you. Um, when you're living underneath, under, living underneath this roof, um, of our house. And I, um, see, that's kind of interesting to hear because I always remember looking at you when I was younger thinking like, cause you always had this like badass persona. Like I'm like, I'm tough. I'm uh, like, I'm the older tough brother. And like, I, you know, it just, it, so for you to t say how you were scared and, you know, you felt vulnerable and that you, you started breaking down and crying kind of, kind of, you know, hits me a certain way. Right. Like, I don't know. Like, I think it was just mostly because like I was away from you guys and our mom and, and then like going through the situation where we went down to Florida and then having to come up here and be ripped apart. And I think that's like, probably when I actually had the breaking point to like just break down and cry and just kind of let it you, all you'd look. had enough at that point yeah pretty much like I just at the time I basically given up like I just took down the whole bad boy so known persona yeah off and it was like I, I basically give up like I didn't even care anymore because it's like here I am with a family I don't even know, and I feel like I'm all by myself. So it's like, who? Like I'm done. Right. So at that point, um, your your foster mom she kind of consoles you a little bit, and starts building that trust with you. So you start trusting her. I'm assuming, right? Um. Yeah. Um. It at least took me almost about a year or two to like gain that trust. Mm -hmm. Like. Like as time went on, like I like I just kind of feed a little trust in it, like because I just remember just sitting down with her one time and just asking her, like, "Hey, what is a mother's job supposed to be like?" Um, That's pretty profound, right? That you didn't that you didn't know what a mom is supposed to be like. So what right. did, what was that what was that conversation like? Um, she like. I don't really remember much about it, but um, I just remember her just going to like some details like mothers are supposed to like love their children and always be there no matter what the scenario is and stuff like that. She's a smart woman. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so you start having a pretty good relationship with your, your foster parents at that point. And in the meantime, we're still going to visits every Monday. We're still seeing each other. Right. Um, I I remember I had just recently got um, all the – I just got a packet of information from 
our adopt like our adoption records and our foster care records when we were like going to their visits every to our visits every week <clears throat> and it had show shown that you felt that it had said in the records that you felt kind of left out a lot um when we went to visits like like our maybe our mom had paid too much attention to uh tiana or and me or maybe not enough to you did you ever feel like you were left out like you were um not shown shown enough love or um, attention well i don't re- really remember saying that um as a when it was i guess interviewing us um but i did kind of felt that way when we was living down in florida for sure um but i really don't remember saying as much to them back when we was going to our visits or when they was taking notes Mm -hmm. um but i surely really did kind of felt that way when we was living down in florida just because um because i was i was always get into trouble and stuff like that but yeah okay so so then you start like i said you build this relationship with your adopted parent or with your foster parents we're still going to visits and you know visits aren't necessarily going great for for you because you don't you from the records it said that you felt kind of left out right um but you still enjoy going because you get to see me and you get to see your other siblings uh joey and tiana right um what were what was it like leaving um leaving from the visits yeah um it was really hard for me um i just remember getting into the car and just feeling really kind of depressed about it just knowing that it went by fast and just knowing that like because every time is where i'd be like is this the last visit like when is it gonna stop because i don't want it to end anytime soon Mm-hmm. Like if it does end, then are we gonna ever see each other until we hit the age of eighteen? Right. So we're going to visits, and I think this kind of drags out for two years. Um, you know, we're in foster care. Finally, our mom gets to the point where she feels like she's not winning in the court system. She feels like um, all all eyes are on her and she feels that she's not capable of achieving what they want her to achieve in order to get us back. So she ends up uh, going to court and she signs off her rights to us kids. When you found out about that, how did you feel? Cause I remember when I found out about that, I felt like I felt like I was be- kind of betrayed in a sense. Like, no, why would you give up? Like we we love you and we want to be with you. Why would right. you Why would you end this fight? What was your thoughts and feelings about that? Um, like I was really devastated at the moment. Like at the time when my foster family told me, um, like I was just feeling really sad and just wanted to be left alone. After that, like, I didn't really want nobody to be around me after that. Why Why was that? Just because, like, at the time, like I said earlier, it was just because it's like, this is it. I'm not going to see my brothers again or my, our, or our mother. Right. At the time. And, and I was like, all right, so here I am is being split a, away from you guys and placed into a foster home by myself um, without my brothers or sisters with me. Um, It really did some really damage to me, like just in my feelings all the time and really depressed. Did you ever get the the video of our last visit? Um, yeah. Yeah. Did you ever watch it before I gave it to you? Because I remember I, I, I think I made DVDs of it and I gave you one. Um, Did you ever watch it before that, like when you were younger? Yeah, um, that was one thing that my parents would let uh, hand it to me. Mm-hmm. Uh, was the last visit uh, of us, and like 
when I first got the video, I didn't like watch it like right away, but right. I think it was like a week went by when I actually watched it. Okay. Yeah, I was never allowed to watch it. That my foster parents told me that I wasn't allowed to watch it until I was 18. I don't know why, but it was something that I was told. So finally, after I moved out, I was able to get that video, and I just recently had made DVD copies of it <clears throat> for everybody. But, right. Um, that's a sad video to watch. Yeah, it is. Um, it's our last visit, and the room's crazy because Joey's, like I said, four years old. Tiana's like two or three, and they're both full of energy and just hyper. You, you at the time were also full <laughs> of energy uh, and hyper because you're always like hyper. Yeah. Um. So you're kind of like off in the background, like rapping. <laughs> Because you, I think you had aspirations to be a rapper, um, and I'm, I remember my what I was feeling at that moment was like just complete and like utter loss. Like this is the last time that I'm going to be able to see our mom, and this is the last time that I might see our siblings. I don't know. I I didn't right. know at the time what was going to happen, and uh, I think at that point. Um, our foster parents kind of made an agreement with each other that they were going to make sure that us children stayed in contact with each other. Right. And, you know, we didn't get to see each other a lot when we were growing up. I think there was times where I maybe only seen you once a year and I'd seen Tiana maybe once a year, even not even that often because she was uh, moving all the time because her dad was in the military. Yeah. Um, Like, um, I think, like, our last visit, um, our, I think you and, T- and Joe and Tiana already left and went home with your foster parents. And my dad was usually the one that came and picked me up after the visits. And so as me, my foster dad, and our mom was walking out of the building, um, from what I was told, um, I hugged our Bla- our Blagigo mom for the first time ever since I from birth until the age of 10 12 at the moment and that it was like the very first time I have ever hugged her from the time that I was from the time I was born until then do you remember that um I, yeah, I remember that, but like I don't remember her saying that or telling my dad at foster dad at that time. Uh, our mom had told your foster dad that. Yeah. So why did you feel like you should give her a hug? Uh, honestly, I like. Were you sad? So yeah, you felt pr- sad. Yeah, pretty much. Sad that you wouldn't see, maybe see her ever again. Yeah. Um, I just remember that day. Yeah, it was, it was such a sad day for me. Um, and I'm sure it was sad for everybody else too. And, right. Uh, I'm sure, you know, we all have our feelings about that day. Um, but you know, luckily for us, you and I were able to stay in contact. We would constantly go see each other. Like not constantly, but, you know, at least once a year we would see each other, which wasn't enough at all, but it was something. And you kind of um, developed a pretty good life. Um, You got a, you had a really good relationship with your, your parent, your foster parents, and then eventually led into them adopting you, right? Um, yeah. Now, did Um, you want to be adopted by them? Um, yeah, like, I remember because, like, my my adopted brother he he was in the picture at the time and um i just remember him going out to the living room and asking them like hey i want to be adopted and and i was like huh all right so at the time when i heard him saying that i i just walked away and a couple hours went by and i was like i went out there i was like hey guys um i was just wondering if i could be adopted and at first they told me no. They're probably like, what the heck are up with these kids? Why do they want to be adopted? <laughs> right. <laughs> and like at the time, they, um, there was like no. And I was like, 
And they was like, yeah, some other family is looking to adopt you. And I was like, oh, all right. It, it, and then I just went off and did my own thing. And I, and then I guess my mom, my foster mom told my foster dad, like, hey, we can't give up on this kid here. And like, I just, the reason why I want to be adopted was just because like, I didn't want to start over into a new foster home, knowing that like, I just got kind of comfortable with this people who took me in the first time and I had to go into another foster home immediately getting adopted by some people I don't even know yet. Right. So, um, so then they chose to adopt you. Obviously that first family kind of fell through, right? Yeah. So they chose to adopt you and, uh, um, you had a good relationship with them for after that, right? Yeah. Um, it was a pretty good, strong relationship that we had like um like i just kind of felt like it wasn't for them because like like you said i had that whole bad boy persona persona going on <laughs> and um like like it wasn't for them because like i kind of felt like if we were still living with my i kind of felt like i probably would have dropped out of school by now you feel like uh being in this home and being adopted by them they gave you a lot more structure and opportunity to just be a better person and to do better with your life. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I feel, I feel like you, you probably would have been in some trouble. <laughs> right. Like I said, you had this bad boy persona. You'd always gotten yourself into trouble. Right. You had, like, you had an act for that. Right. I'm not saying our bad, our biological mom was a bad mom because she was No, she loved us very yeah. much. She, I just think she didn't have the proper structure when she was younger and she wasn't I, 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 I don't know what what went wrong with her parenting her parents you know what right. they, what they did to her or anything but um <clears throat> you know her, just the parenting skills weren't that great right um so you're adopted and at that point um you you're going to school in Lansing right yeah uh what schools did you go to um the first middle school i went to with them was the right rich middle school which is like right down the street from where i live now and um then after that my high school i went to was everett high school and i graduated from there did you uh ever get made fun of for being a foster kid or um, for being adopted or anything like that? Um, there, there wasn't so many people that knew. Like, Did you not want people to know? You just didn't say it, talk um, about it? Like, I really, like, well, all right. So, like, when I got adopted, my parents, um, there was a lot of question because, like, I was in the sixth grade at the time, I believe. And when I got adopted and went to school, and there was teachers asking me, like, hey, um, what, like, did you just change your last name? And I was like, yeah, um, I just got adopted not too long, um, about last week or so. And, and that's when the whole class started to, like, um, got adopted? Like, what, like, what is adoption? And that's when the teacher kind of um, explained what the adoption is and what foster care was. And then I remember the next day, um, the teacher just brought in cupcakes to celebrate it. Oh, and that's cool. Yeah. Wow. That's pretty cool. Um, so I think because you, you went to school in Lansing, it's kind of more of a it's kind of more of a like known thing that there's foster kids in you know right in the system and in in the school system and whatnot so when i went i remember when i was in foster care i got made fun of um right because i went to a, a small it was a small community and there wasn't really foster kids there um so when you talked about being a foster kid it was kind of like a bad thing it was like you're associated with bad things like you know you're associated with drugs or your parents right. were drug addicts or whatever um 
so it was kind of a shameful thing. I never really wanted to talk about it, and so I just kind of, you know, left it. Um, <clears throat> so time goes on, and you and I still see each other. You still see Tiana, and you still see Joey. And um, I think finally when I, when I moved out is when you and I kind of started developing. Like, I, we got a hold of each other. Right. And you and I kind of started developing a good relationship. And uh, we started hanging out more. And we even moved in with each other oh, yeah. for a short time. Um, and then we've been, we've been, we've pretty been going. Close. Yeah, we've been pretty close since then. Um, it's kind of amazing how, how life has kind of taken this, this rough road for us. And then we still managed to be pretty close. Oh, yeah. And, uh, um, so I kind of want to talk about what, um, kind of, I kind of want to talk about like our dad a little bit because we haven't talked about him at all. Right. So back in Florida, um, when we were younger, we, I think the last time we seen him, I was three and you were probably about four. Right. And from my understanding, he was deported, um, back to Honduras and um that's what uh we were told through the foster agency foster agency that they tried finding him and they just assumed that he was deported back to his country well we were also told from like our our mom and other people that he had went and started another family and had other kids and just didn't really want anything to do with us so we kind of grew up thinking you know he's he's just this beat down dad beat, yeah like dirtbag dad who doesn't want anything to do with us and right. doesn't love us never cared about us whatever and so um i never really had a desire to like try to find him and uh i just remember when i turned 18 i i tried so hard to find our mom and i remember going to work i worked at a, a nursing home and uh i would uh every single night um I would take a tablet to work and I would just scroll online, like typing in our mom's name. Um, and this was back before like social media was big. I mean, right. we had Facebook, but I think Instagram might've just came out. Um, but like social media wasn't as big as, as it, it is, is now. now. So like typing in her name on Facebook didn't really help out too much, but um, I was able to find our, a name of our aunt and I typed her in on Facebook and I just remember the first person popped up I was like oh that kind of she kind of like resembles somebody who I remember and but I was like she lives in William or Williamsburg or something and it was like in Virginia right and so I was like you know what I'll send her a message on Facebook and so I sent her a message and she was like oh my gosh like I can't believe it's you like she, it was, it was our aunt. And, uh, so she was through her, I was able to reconnect with our mom. And I think I immediately sent the number to you, her, our mom's number to you. Right? Yeah. What was that like for you? Cause I remember like when I called, she was like, she was like, uh, I called and she's like, hello. And I'm like, hello. And she's like, who is this? I'm like, this is David. And she's like, David. Like David, I'm I'm your son, and she's like, "What? Oh my gosh!" And then she just like started bawling, right? And you know, and then <laughs> we were able to like talk a little bit. I think she was so like taken back by me being able to find her that, uh, you know, she, uh, um, you know, she couldn't really stay on the phone too long, right? So, um. What was that like when I, I gave her your number? Or like, I gave you her number? Yeah, like, um, I was kind of a little nervous and shocked at the moment and wondering, like, uh, what to say and how to say it to her. Um, but I was a little... I was emotional at the time and, and had to take in the moment um before and up calling her on the phone just to have a conversation with her 
that was a uh, such a surreal time for me i just like i remember being so stoked i'm like what like what are the chances of being able to be re- reunited and so i just remember like you and i we went and met her and we spent like a couple hours talking with her asking her questions and just discussing things and it was a good time oh, and yeah. uh so it felt good to be reunited but then uh as time goes on through different situations that had gone on in my life i had a desire to want to be able to find her dad so my wife ended up buying me a 23andme and when i did that i got um i got a a ping in my account where a notification and our cousin our, our se- i was able to find a second cousin on our dad's side and so i sent her a message i'm like hey you know my name's david and i'm looking for my dad and i gave his name and she was like oh i think i have family members with that last name and so she was able to talk with her mom about it and her mom's like yeah that's that's my you know cousin or that's my my uncle and um so through through being through 23 me i was able to get us reconnected with our biological dad as well right what was that like for you um i was excited and nervous at the same time um just because like we haven't seen him for like over some 20 some odd years and just wondering like what what like what is he up to or where has he been up to since we last seen him and that scenario type thing so we go down we meet him we uh spend some time with him we get to know him and we find out that you know this whole time he actually wanted to be to be with us he you know he actually was deported then he came back but the whole time that he was back here in the states he was searching for us and his family was searching for us right and nobody knew where we were because our last names had changed because we were adopted and so they were overjoyed when we were able to reconnect oh yeah um and w- i remember uh we were at our one of our aunt's houses down there and she ended up giving us a uh um well she gave us both right it was a uh, it was like a thing that for our um our uh baptism from when we were like babies and it was like a it was like a i don't know some sort of like memento from being baptized right. in the catholic church and then i just remember our dad sent us uh, a letter while he was sitting in um he was sitting in a uh an ice facility getting ready to be shipped back to honduras um hold on guys my camera just died i need to go <laughs> fix it <laughs> sorry about that um so he wrote this letter while he was in an ice detention facility getting ready to be shipped back and it was pretty much explaining how you know he loved us so much and he really is sorry for everything that was you know happening and that no matter what he you know wants to see us again and you know all this stuff that we were told that he was not true that we you know, he had never loved us and that's why he left and whatnot. Um, so that was a real defining moment for me to be able to see that, you know, this whole time that, that he, he actually did care for us and wanted to be in our lives. Right. So, um, so yeah, that was like, and that was just recently when we found him, oh, yeah. that was about two years ago. And through that, we were able to have you know, develop a relationship with him and develop a relationship with our cousins and, uh, 
uncles and aunts and it's just it's just been a great ride oh, so yeah. you know our life has kind of come full circle and you know i'm i'm happy i'm happy where you've come in in life i'm happy right. where i'm at in life i feel like same year i feel that for you you know through the through the the tragic <clears throat> times that we've gone through it's kind of helped make us stronger and right. it's caused us to rise above and just be better oh, um, yeah. and always be better so um is there anything else you want to talk about and um nothing i could think of far off the bat well i want to thank you for coming on the podcast yeah. and just kind of telling us a little bit about our story and i hope people find it inspirational and um you know it's it's not a perfect podcast we're still trying to work out the the bugs and trying to uh learn how to have a better you know dialogue and whatnot but you know it's right. this is our story so right. i hope you guys enjoy it and uh thanks for listening yeah thanks for having me yep